far as her getting married, I, I feel like the first time she talked about getting married with uh, Ken. with Ken, I had some serious doubts about that. He was a nice guy and all, but I don't know if he was the, right be guy. the best fit for her. Uh, I met Ryan, and I feel much more confident about Ryan's demeanor and his his, his, uh, his objectives. He's goal oriented, and I, I think his intentions are are sincere. I think he loves her, so I'm happy about that. We'll keep our fingers crossed, like I said. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday, April 4th, 2024. There's another story about Gypsy Blanchard that's come out and now I'm going to have to share what I know because photographs were leaked by someone that worked at a tattoo parlor and by worked, I mean this person has now been fired of Gypsy Rose Blanchard getting a tattoo with her ex-fiance, Ken at her cousin's tattoo shop in Cutoff, Louisiana. The photograph was snapped by an employee of the tattoo shop that my sources have said have now has now been fired. And that picture set off a tidal wave of gossip, of stories, and of the media reaching out to the parents of both Gypsy and of Ken to get the scoop about what was going on in this reunion. And if Ryan and Gypsy, her husband, if their split had anything to do with Ken and what does this mean for Gypsy and Ken? And it's so messy and so ridiculous. And I spoke to the family I actually spoke to Gypsy and I spoke to Christy Blanchard and I spoke to my other family source and I know all the details. I don't put out the news on this until after a leak happens and I'm always going to be here to correct whatever the messy narrative is. So here's the tea. In one of my videos recently, someone mentioned that Christy, they were accusing <laughs> some made up fabricated story that Christy Blanchard and I don't know each other and that Christy was off spouting on her mouth, that I harass her, that we're not friends, that we don't speak, that I'm just constantly looking for information from her. And I contacted Christy and I, I sent the screenshot to her and she started laughing hysterically. And she sent me this as a response. Katie from Without a Crystal Ball is a close personal friend of mine. Our friendship is not solely based on Gypsy. We have formed a really close bond and I'm really proud to call her a friend. So to the public who is saying that Katie is not a friend of me is absolutely false. She has been a voice for me for many years. She is, she even has a close relationship with Gypsy as well. I also want to say, I just don't think of Katie as a friend. I think of her as family. Christy Blanchard and I met in 2019. We have not physically met because I live in Minnesota, she lives in Louisiana, and I have a child with a disability. That hasn't stopped our friendship from growing. And we have spent hours, hundreds of hours on the phone talking over the last five years. I will correct some of the information that's been going out because there is some messiness that's happening here. They're brand new, they're fresh, they're still red. Yeah, they're still, they're still healing. <laughs> She's not pregnant for everybody who keeps asking. No, I'm, I'm on She's birth not control. Pregnant. Like, what the hell? And we have not had any intimacy. We're okay, just hanging out. We're just, total friends. All, we're just hanging out as friends. That's all it is. Just like I said, do whatever you're going to do. You're both adults. I'm just clout chasing, LOL. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, do you guys notice that I, I don't post any content? I'm not a content creator. All my socials are private. He broke up with his girlfriend. Excuse me. Mutual separation. They want to know where your puppy is, for God's sake. Please answer that. I, I, he's, uh, she is with Ryan. I gave her to Ryan. Like, 
I didn't want to uproot her from everything that she knows. So she loved Ryan more. So I let him keep the puppy. And so apparently someone had reported to my PO that Ken is a felon. And everybody knows oh my that God. parole, you can't hang out with other convicted felons. So I've already told them that he's not. I've already he's wrong. He doesn't have a criminal record, never been in prison. Nope. Nope. He's not a felon. No felon. So <laughs> I'm not I, if there's anything else you want to clarify, yep. you know, I'm pretty good at passing messages. Oh. <laughs> I do not have an OnlyFans. Whatever is going around with OnlyFans, that's not me. I would never do that. Gypsy Blanchard was married and is still married, by the way, to Ryan Anderson. Now, they split more than two weeks ago that she finally left him. But the relationship had been in trouble for a very long time. And the details I didn't share in my last video, but I know all of them, have now been reported by TMZ. And they're saying, like a source said, that the, the scope of the breakdown in the relationship had to do with Ryan's jealousy of her dad. So, and that he would get upset with Gypsy when she wanted to go see her dad. And that jealousy was creating issues in their marriage. It's a high level and a very basic understanding, but the issues were far deeper than just jealousy of Ryan and dad and of Ryan of Gypsy's dad. Gypsy moved to Lake Charles, which is two and a half hours from Cutoff, Louisiana, where her family is. Gypsy has no family in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So Gypsy got married to Ryan and moved to Lake Charles to live where he lives because that's where he works and where his family is. When Gypsy moved there, she was very much reliant 100% on Ryan because Gypsy does not have a driver's license. She doesn't have a learner's permit. She has stipulations for her parole about like where she can go and who she can go with. She has requirements that she has to make. So she has to be in therapy. She has to complete outpatient therapy as a part of her parole. And she was committed to all of those things. But the problem was is that she could only go places with Ryan. She couldn't go anywhere without him. She was either with him or with his mom constantly. And she didn't know his mom that well. And she was just getting to know Ryan in the real world. And her entire support system was two and a half hours away in Cutoff, Louisiana. And that support system was eager to establish their own relationship with her because they had been alienated by, from her for 23 years by Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. Blanchard convinced Gypsy that Rod was a deadbeat father that never paid child support, that didn't send gifts, that didn't care about her, that left her for his new family, that wanted nothing to do with her, and put Gypsy through horrific abuse as a child up until the age of 23 and to the time of Dee Dee's death. She was a captive of her mother, living a very, very controlled life by her mother. Her mother dictated who she spoke to, who she was able to communicate with, where she went, who she saw. She had a power of attorney over her, which meant that at doctor's appointments, Gypsy couldn't even advocate for herself or speak to her own issues because Gypsy's mother had convinced doctors that she was med like cognitive disability and unable to function beyond the capacity of like a 10 year old. Gypsy tried to run away once, maybe twice, but one time when she finally did run away, her mom went and retrieved her and then tied her to a bed for two weeks and beat her. Gypsy was not able to even go to the bathroom without her mother's permission. Her mother starved her, her mother controlled her medications and forced her on a G tube and so she was drugging Gypsy for her whole life. And Gypsy's body went through incredible like trauma as a result of the medical abuse. She had a G-tube place that she didn't need. She had a biopsy done on her leg, which she didn't need that has a scar on her. She has had her teeth extracted because of medication she was on, which caused her teeth to rot. 
and because her mom had her salivary glands removed because her mom told doctors that she drooled too much. Gypsy has permanent dentures now. I mean, not permanent. She has to wear dentures because she has no teeth. And the teeth that she does have are basically nubs. So Gypsy's life was very controlled. She couldn't do anything. And so when she moved in with Ryan, by the way, it felt as controlled as she was with her mom. She couldn't go anywhere by herself. She couldn't do anything on her own. She couldn't speak to anyone. And so on the few times in the last three months that she was actually able to go back to cut off Louisiana and go without Ryan just to have some one-on-one -on -one time with her dad, they got into humongous fights, huge fights, very unhealthy fights. He was convinced that her parents were poisoning her against him, and that wasn't true at all. He was also convinced that her dad was going to try to make her leave him, which I know Rod and Christy personally, and I can tell you that Christy has been nothing but supportive of Gypsy having to make her own mistakes. And if Gypsy is having a problem in her relationship, she will go to her mom, Christy is her mom now, and ask her mom for advice. And Christy will offer her advice. And it got to a point where these fights were getting so intense that her safety was becoming, a pro was becoming an issue. She and Ryan, the, the final straw was that she wanted to go see her sister, Mia. And he didn't want her to go. And he told her no. After... All of these months of being told no, of all of these near physical altercations and the control that she was other, she was not doing well and she needed to leave. There was a lot of other things happening, like he wanted her to get pregnant. There was so many rumors going on and on and on about how she was going to get pregnant or I thought she was pregnant. Gypsy is not pregnant, by the way, but Ryan did in my opinion, and this is just my opinion based on what I've talked about with them, is that Ryan wanted to get her pregnant because I believe that Ryan wanted to lock her down and it would be another way of control. But Gypsy is not ready to be a mom at all. And she will tell you that. And she needs, I mean, she this girl wants to take care of herself. She wants to go to therapy. She is. She wants to find a good therapist. And the therapy issue was another sticking point and control within their relationship. And so now she's moved and she is with her parents in Cutoff, Louisiana. And she wants to live her life and explore life. So she didn't leave Ryan because she was in love with someone else. She didn't leave Ryan because she wanted to get back with her ex fiance, Ken. She didn't leave Ryan because she was, he was, she was manipulating Ryan. And she certainly didn't need to, she didn't use Ryan for money. In my comments last week, someone said to me, oh, she just used Ryan, like she just had a hustle. She needed someone to pay while she was in lockup. Uh-uh. I can promise you that Christy and Rod were paying for her commissary and paying for her books, paying for her calls. She was well taken care of. She did not need a husband or a fiance to pay her way at all. Like she's maybe one of the few inmates that had complete support of her family and they were financially supporting her while she was incarcerated. So this idea that she needed Ryan for his money is completely false. And Ryan's a teacher. He hadn't even been living on his own until he married her. She was, he was actually living with his mother and helping his mom raise his nephew. He was living at home with his mom before he married Gypsy. So it wasn't like he came from money. And he, she also didn't need him for a place to parole to because she had a place to parole to, which was her parents. The original place that she was going to parole to from the very get-go was to her parents' home, Rod and Christy Blanchard in Cutoff, Louisiana. That's where she is now. She's with her mom and she's with her mom and dad. And I'm going to call Christy her mom because that is literally what Gypsy calls her. She is the most Gypsy has ever had for a mother figure in her whole life. So Gypsy leaves Ryan and they are going to get it divorced. I know that they have not filed yet, but I can assure you that, well, I guess things could change, but I was told there's 0% chance of a reconciliation zero. Like she wants to move on. She needs to take care of herself. So 
part of her process has been wanting to reconnect with people in her life that were there for her, that helped her while she was incarcerated and that she confided in and that offered her support, which included her ex-fiance, Ken. Now she spoke about Ken on a podcast with Nick Vial and said that, you know, he had some of her stuff still, that she still kept in touch with his mom, that, you know, she felt like he was kind of sniffing around and said like, if you didn't like me at my worst, don't try to come with me when I'm at my best. And Ryan said all kinds of disparaging derogatory comments about Ken. And you could tell that there was some issues with him being jealous of Ken. Gypsy also, before they got married, was talking to Ken. They never really stopped communicating. They just stopped their relationship. And the really, the fame was part of the reason why they didn't get married and he broke off the relationship. But the other part was that Ken didn't, at least from my understanding, didn't think that she would be ready to be married and didn't think that it would be right to marry her out of prison or in prison because he felt like she needed to experience her life on her own and get to know who she was without the pressure of marriage, which is actually what I think Christy and Rod would have preferred when it came to Ryan. Like, I know Christy would have been so supportive of them just dating and then, you know, making space for Ryan to come visit in cutoff. But Ryan was hell bent on marrying her and she agreed. She felt like she loved him and it had nothing to do with the fact of her needing a place to stay. The weekend she's going to go see Mia, they have a huge blowout and that's when she decides she's going to leave. Her sister Mia comes and picks her up. They pack up Mia's car and they take her over to Mia's house. Mia's in college. And then after they spend the weekend together, they take the rest of Gypsy's things from Mia's to their place in Cutoff with Rod and Christy Blanchard. And she moves in with her parents. So that's like that legitimately happened. And everyone in the family is super supportive of just helping Gypsy navigate life and be a young adult. She's 32. She's not, I liken Gypsy's maturity level to like a 15 to 16 year old that makes mistakes and is learning to make decisions for themselves, even though she's 32. So now that we're at this point, after she's there for about a week, almost two, she decides that She wants to see Ken. And so Ken decides that he's going to come meet her because they've met in person in prison, right? He would come to do visits, but they've never spent time together outside of prison. The intention of Ken's return into her life is not so that they get married. It's not so they walk off into the sunset and become husband and wife. It's really not even so much that they can date because Ken lives in Texas. She lives in Cutoff, Louisiana. That's sort of where things are. He he came on Sunday and on Monday, they went to go get, get tattoos. The tattoos are two matching Huskies that sort of interlink when you put your hand, when you, they put their arms together. Gypsy actually sent me the photograph of the tattoos that she got with him. And she sent me the photograph of the two of them standing together and when they they spent one day in New Orleans to do some like they went out to lunch and they toured New Orleans together and had a day like doing that kind of stuff and he's already gone so he left yes he left today Ken's visit was not filmed for the show so their entire like experience together was just two people reconnecting and he's being supportive of her And she is comfortable with that because he was there for her for years while she was incarcerated. And as far as what the family's thoughts are, they flat out told me that they've always felt like Ken's. Now, on the show, Rod said that he felt that Ryan was, what did he say? That Ryan had good intentions, that he had good motivations and good drives. And I will tell you that Rod was 100% on Team Ryan. He was way more on Team Ryan than Christy or anyone else. Like, he loved Ryan. So this ridiculous idea that he would try to poison Gypsy against Ryan is just laughable to me. Rod had said that he wasn't sure about Ken. And I think at that time, a lot of the feelings about Ken just had to be, 
had a lot to do with the fact that she was heartbroken about what happened. Like she really loved him and she was really sad when they broke up and she felt like the fame is what kind of ruined the relationship. As far as like today where they're at, Rod is, I don't know if he's home. I don't think he's home right now. I know Christy's home because the paparazzi were out there and like literally showed up at cutoff and like followed them around and caught Ken and Gypsy holding hands. And, you know, like TMZ says it's not romantic. And they even told me that it's not romantic. I don't know what's going to happen in it. I don't know if they will be romantic. I don't know if they had any romance during this period of time. The way that it's being viewed right now is like she left Ryan for Ken and that's not the case at all. Ryan and Gypsy's relationship just wasn't good and it didn't have anything to do with Ken. And Gypsy is course loves Ken as a friend but she is not going to do anything from a serious perspective with anyone until she's divorced and from my understanding Ken isn't going to dive into anything deeply with her until she goes through a divorce because he doesn't want to be in the middle of a divorce she has met with lawyers I don't know when she's gonna file that's all I know about that but this relationship with her and Ken is, I don't know, I always really liked him. That was my personal like experience was that he was always super like patient with her and he didn't play games with her and he would always defend her very much against the vitriol that came out by people. And he was also a very like private person. So it was hard at times when things about him would get out into the public because he wasn't like interested in her because of the fame. Like I, to give you context of like how these two men reached out to her, it's very different. So Ken watched mommy dead and dearest and he was devastated by what he watched and he felt really awful for gypsy. And so he reached out to her from a place of like compassion and like sincerity of, you know, trying to just be there and be supportive and just let her know like what he saw he was heartbroken by. Like that's how their friendship started. Like he reached out and was like, I watched the show and I felt horrible, that kind of thing. Ryan reached out to her on a dare. His friend wanted to watch Tiger King, wanted, said that he was going to reach out to Tiger King dude and that he would then reach out to Gypsy. He didn't reach out with her reach out to her because he was feeling compassion. It was like he was reaching out to her on a dare. Like, well, if you do that, I'll do this. And then the way that he gave her information about him up front is very different than how she built her relationship with Ken. So they did have problems, she and Ken, but it wasn't any, the, the problems with Ken, frankly, had a lot to do with people in their circle that were creating drama and that were making Ken's life miserable. And that person is still doing this to Gypsy to this day, but has less control over Gypsy's narrative now and Gypsy's voice. I'm not gonna say like, I know everything, but I will say that Gypsy is a grown adult and I get pretty damn tired of listening to people act like she should be acting like an average 32 year old and then forgetting the fact that she was medically and physically and emotionally and physic like psychologically and abused some of the most severe forms of abuse a child can go through for 23 years and a captive of her mom's and then expect her to go to prison and then come out like a functioning normal 32 year old and then not giving her the space to make mistakes i'm never going to pile on this girl i'm never going to say that she's a horrible person because she's not she's an imperfect person and I actually think in many ways her mom her mom's death to me felt justified because it was like if Dee didn't die Gypsy was that's how I've always viewed it that's how I've always understood it and that's my perspective and and I also don't look at her as like a complete like imperfect person that hasn't made a lot of mistakes or committed a crime by the way a crime I see that too
but I'm not gonna pile on and be like, she's the worst just because it's trendy to do so. And I'm also not going to run with narratives and push conspiracies from sources that are and proven to be malignant narcissists and liars. I'm also not going to use sources that are disgruntled ex-people that were working with her on projects or people that she was incarcerated with that she can't talk to now. I'm not going to use those as sources because I can go directly to the source. And that's what they've said. So what are your thoughts about all of this? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to leave a comment. Make sure to click on that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. Thank you for watching. Bye guys.